Hey everyone, this is a message response to the user Skeptical Vegetable. Uh, this person asks a great question, and I think it highlights a lot of issues in education and especially America. Um, this person asks, what is my view on making college, grad school, law school, etc. free for all Americans? And this person goes on to also state that you know there probably would have to be something tax related to that in order to fund it. And the issue with anything that is government influenced, um, and that is by virtue of being government involving taxation, is it removes choice. Uh, when you remove choice from any good or service, no matter what it is, whether everything and surprisingly is you know as big as national security, all the way down to whether you want to get vanilla or chocolate ice cream. When you start to remove choice, uh, you take away the ability for people to vote and choose with their dot with their dollars or whatever resource you want to use, whatever currency you want to use, or uh, and the like. Uh, when you take away the ability for people to choose what they value the most. Um, it distorts the incentives for uh, those who are in power with the system, in this case, educational system, uh, to move with the market and to meet new demands. And you can see that empirically with the U.S. education system. Um, much of what you see in the post-secondary world includes uh, you know, the four-year degree where people are taking a bunch of classes that uh, don't really meet the needs of today's market demands they don't have the critical thinking element. They don't have um, classes that are really tailored to help people to help push people forward. And I went to uh, two major universities. Um, I, you know, went to what's considered a top program in my field uh, for my undergraduate degree. I went to um, what's considered, a, you know, a, a decent graduate program as well. Um, and when you look at what is done and the methods by which education is done and the classes you have to take, you know, most people who go to college these days will say to you, yeah, there's classes that I took that, you know, have no bearing on what I'm doing. You know, they, they, they were forced into the electives. They were forced to take this as part of their critical tracking. Um, and, you know, the teacher wasn't the best and, the, you know, the, the curriculum was lacking and this and that. And you start to hear these complaints and, you know, I, you know, I've been there and even recently and I hear it all the time from the people that the major university system um, doesn't really tailor to modern demands. It doesn't really give people the skills that they want. It doesn't really hone in on what's most important. There's a lot of superfluous information there, a lot of stuff that's not retained. Um, you know, I know that and even having gone to a great program where I learned a lot and it was, you know, amazing. I took great classes. I still, there was still times when I said, okay, this could be taught a little bit better. You know, we could use more hands-on here. We, you know, I didn't really need this class. I'm not going to remember it. I don't, you know, I don't remember everything from uh, one of the classes I think was like Age of Dinosaurs. I mean, I, you know, remember things generally, but, you know, it, it didn't necessarily help me in my field, but it was, I had to take something in, in that arena um, as part of the electives. And these types of symptoms and signs come from the system that's built because it mandates through taxation this type of system for respect and for speech, like, oh, you need to go here in order to do it. And then what happens is, is it, it changes the, in, the incentives and it changes the market signals because now when you have all this money being pumped and taken from the market and put into these schools, you can have a glut of something that's not as needed. And in America, you see that with the glut of um, four-year degrees. There are tons of people with college degrees and they're all finding their new home at minimum wage jobs, you know, at Starbucks and Walmart and Target and all that kind of stuff. Um, and the reason is, is that they're just isn't enough demand for the degree choices that people have, a lot of liberal arts degrees, a lot of non-technical degrees. Having the four-year degree just doesn't carry the weight and prestige for doing anything that it once did. And these major university systems have not really uh, come to accommodate that. They're, you know, they're not teaching the technical skills that people need. They're not teaching the critical thinking skills. Um, in some ways, they're handicapping people because they might teach them the wrong information. And a part of that is it comes from the choice being taken out. And if you look at places online, I think you can see examples of this like Khan Academy, MIT Open Courseware, um, a lot of different types of, you know, uh, code academies and other types of like pseudo votech online educational systems have been springing up regularly across the world because people are realizing I can learn the core stuff. I'm passionate about this. I'm going to learn what I need to do. And they build up the skills that way instead of wasting their money on these other, you know, long drawn out degrees or things that they, they just simply can't afford. Um, or 
a more common example is, you know, you may go to a local high school, so that maybe went to public high school, uh, but your teachers suck. I, I know that experience because I, uh, I have done and do still uh, tutoring for, uh, you know, many math subjects, I've tutored physics and things like that. Um, and it's not that the material is necessarily super difficult, it's just the teachers are terrible. Um, and when you're stuck in that system and you can't really pick and choose your teachers and you can't be like, you know what, this teacher really doesn't, you know, talk that well. I went online and I found a teacher and their program is better, you know. Salman Khan's program is way better than my, you know, Algebra 1 teacher. I think I should be doing that instead and listening to him and going through, you know, those lessons. You, know, you don't have the opportunity for choice. Um, and that's what happens is that you get this big system of, you know, circle jerk peer review and you get this big system where all this money is being pumped in and distorting the signals about what people really want, what's more effective because people can't really vote with their dollars. And then you also have the inflated view uh, of the prestige of the American education system, you know, because... Uh, all that money is being pumped in and advertised in public relations, by, you know, by the government, and that's not really the, the skills that people need. And and, and for what I've seen, even from a lot of my friends, you know, they're they're spending a lot of time catching up after college, trying to get the skills that they need, trying to learn things that you know are more important or more tailored to their job, or not even getting you know jobs in their field uh, that they were you know studying for. So. That's how come this concept of free, you know, doesn't really exist, of course, because it's not free. It's coming from somebody. They're paying it through taxes, which is a threat of force. If you don't pay it, you go to you know, jail. If you resist, you could die. Um, and then it distorts the market incentives because people don't have a choice in it. You know, when somebody takes money from you um, and they spend it how they think you should be spending it, it's not really thinking about what you want. And that's the biggest issue is government isn't... Um, you know, when it, when it acts, isn't getting a popular vote on every single thing that, you know, line item spends. And some people are not comfortable with this. They're like, oh, well, but maybe the people in government are super smart and they're like angelic beings who can read our minds and do a lot better. But that that's just proven patently false um, by the market status quo. You know, people pay for things that they really want. They vote with their dollars, whether it's food, whether it's technology, whatever. They go for the good stuff. And the more the information spreads, um, the more opportunities people have to make better choices. You know, of course, people can make poor choices for themselves in terms of health, um, in terms of choosing poor products, uh, choosing doing bad stuff that's bad for their body. Yeah, of course, of course. But the the barrier there comes from um, the suppression of knowledge. The suppression of knowledge largely in the past came because of copyright law and the patent office and things like that that prevented... Um, the spread of, uh, of knowledge, uh, and that is the concept of, you know, piracy versus theft thing. I won't get into the whole spiel about it now, but the short of it is, is that uh, keeping information, you know, just the information, not the physical part, out of people's hands through threats of force, you know, and, and the government system um, has stuck to that. And how that changed now is the internet. You know, thanks to the internet, now people, in technical violation of much of the copyright laws, you know, they, some, in some cases it's fair use, but in technical violation of most of the copyright laws, have shared knowledge, have shared information, have opened stuff up. And I mean, it's just been amazing. I, I, this It's a passion of mine. I love studying. I love looking at it. Um, and you can see the difference across the globe um, of people in you know the most poorest regions of the globe who just because they, they got a computer and they got the internet access, they got, you know, two basic things. And now they're learning stuff uh, about, you know, hard science, you know, hard math. They're like, you know, growing their skills, becoming tech savvy, you know, producing things for others that they find valuable. And this is actually uh, happening even in Africa, too. Uh, the technological revolution is starting there. It's still it's a little tougher there because of the uh, conflict among uh, warring factions who wish to control and become the new government. Um, and I, you know, I don't want to paint a broad stroke. Obviously, there's many countries within Africa, but that is a motif of, of many of the African uh, conflicts is <laughs> The, the uh, leftover ripple, ripples of imperialism, of, of constant destruction uh, of the of the natural resources um, and peoples there. Uh, not to say they didn't have conflicts before, but rather those those lingering effects uh, are still there. Um, so, you know, it, that's really what it boils down to. You know, you have to be able to open that up. And then you once you remove away this, oh, I need to go to a four-year university to be considered legitimate, then you start to have different types of certifications and independent accrediting agencies and opportunities for people to learn stuff really quick, get to the point, and, and you know, and get out and be considered uh, ready or capable for their field. Um, and and I, I think you can see some of the clearest examples of that uh, with 
code academies. And of course, you know, you're not going to be able to learn everything you need to know to be a master within a three month code course or a six month code course. Um, you know, that's a lifetime of learning. But the point is, is that people can bypass this. I need to spend four years of my life and 50,000, 60,000, 100,000, who knows, the amount of dollars just to learn these skills. Um, the cost isn't as high when you focus in on what you're really there for. And that comes from the decentralization, the opening up of ideas. So I hope that doesn't uh, uh, confuse you about what my point is. Uh, skeptical vegetable, I like that, I like that name. Uh, but I think that's really where you got to start. You got to look at, and this is how everything is always boiled down. How is what funded? You know, how did it come to be? Where did you get from that quote unquote concept of free? And then look at what the problem is. What's the issue? What's the accomplishment? What's the goal? You're trying to say, I want to see society bloom with knowledge and ability and talent and, edu and education. Well, how does that happen? Make the cost easy. You, know, you make the cost low to getting that. The, and that's the opportunity cost or actual resource cost. And you know you see that so quickly now with educational resources and tools and games. Like you can get literally like on your phone, you can have games that help you know, you learn words or learn languages. I mean, it, it's just incredible what um, has been done through decentralization, you know, breaking through the red tape of needing to get permission to government, uh, especially through the internet. Uh, so I think that's just going to continue to blossom. Uh, I think that especially if you look at someone like, you know, Salman Khan's work, Khan Academy, that's a perfect example, slam dunk example of how you could have someone that can teach a whole heck of a lot better than most teachers. And it's on a video and you can just go back and watch it as many times until you get it and do practice problems until you get it. And that's really what people need. People need to have mastery. Separate educational issue. Uh, something that actually the education system doesn't really focus on is mastery. Uh, they, don't, they don't sit there and say, it's okay that you got this wrong. We're not going to judge you on that. You're going to keep doing this until you understand it. That's how you need to learn, but that's not how it's done. Education just, you know, cheese hole, uh, you know, Swiss cheese holes all the way up, you know. You may have learned 80% or 90%, but you didn't learn 100%. And if you list those gaps, you keep going up, but then you forgot what those other things were that you didn't understand. And it, it, it really screws people up who had a poor starting point. Uh, so yeah, yeah, actually, go ahead and check that Sabacon research out. He has the, the whole statistics they did with several schools showing how the kids who just took a little bit longer to figure that out, once they got past that you know, hump of, oh, okay, well, I didn't understand, but now I understand the concept, they shot right up with the kids who were considered smart, who got it right off the bat. And yeah, they probably have better critical thinking skills right off the bat, but the other kids weren't necessarily dumb. They just need a little bit more time to get that concept. And then once they mastered it, they got it. So, all right, take care, everyone, and I'll talk to you later.